Maybe, maybe you should go and do some contemplating. Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hi, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is Rose Buddies. It's a podcast about... Oh, shit. <laughs> I knocked a bunch of stuff over. Should we start over? No, we're in it. <laughs> I only have so many megabytes of data on my computer. I can't waste them on false starts. I just knocked all my ding-dang games over. Oh, my disc is on the ground. Babe. Splatoon was just on the ground. Aw. What a metaphor, though, for this episode of The Bachelorette Canada we just watched, huh? You didn't you think- say what our podcast was about. Rose Buddies? Mm-hmm. It's about The Bachelorette Canada. I said you should have picked that up by now. Well, I mean, not always. No, in fact, one might argue it might never again be about The Bachelorette <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Uh, no, I hope it is. I hope we continue with this. Anyway, we just watched the finale of The Bachelorette Canada, starring Jasmine, mine and Rachel's best friend. Have we met Jasmine? No. I feel like we have. No, we haven't. We're all living underneath that big, the same big moon. Mm-hmm. If you think about it. On the same continent. Well, on the same continent. We're all friends here on North America. Uh, and she's trying to decide between two good boys, and we're all just going to try and be here for her. I feel like during finale eps of Rose Buddies, we usually spoil who won. Let's, because I, I imagine most of our listenership doesn't doesn't go through the arcane arts that we go through to watch this show. You try way, and keep it under wraps? Big thanks to Brock in the Rose Buddies group, who uh, essentially made this season possible for us. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Brock. And apologies again to the W Network. Uh, but yeah, I think we should try to be as chronological as possible, don't you? Okay. All right. Challenge the challenge is on. Um, yeah, it was the finale. How are you feeling? How are your spirits? Well, I don't want to give anything away. No, it could just be like in general. I'm very happy for Jasmine. I think we both left the episode happy for Jasmine. I think Jasmine found love in a very hopeful place. I think there were a lot of good options. I think there's a strong batch of boys. We've said that from the start. And I, I think they're, they're, you know, I can, it's hard to talk about without spoiling it. Maybe we should just get into it. Yeah, I don't think we can really talk about it without giving it away. Let's hop right in there. Okay. Uh, so Noah is taping this in front of a live studio audience. So Himself we, yes. on like a handy cam. He's very busy. He's And it's very like, very like zine. It's very like, you know what I mean? Like very... Like grassroots. Grassroots, just like, what's up, guys? It's me, Noah, Mm -hmm. here with my edgy view, my skewed view. Mm -hmm. He's got, like, handwritten index cards that he's, like, throwing across the audience. Yeah, he's got got a lot of buttons on his jeans. (laughs) Like a button fly? Like a, no, I mean, like, you know, buttons and tears and stitches and, like, cool. He, like, wrote, was that a thing at your school where the kids who were a bit edgier would write things on their jeans oh, yeah. and markers. Oh, yeah. It's fucking cool. <laughs> I always wanted to be like that. I always wanted to write, like, what I was into. Yeah. Um. Well, what would you have written, though? You know, like Charizard. <laughs> Mostly Charizard. Um, the, the, just the names of all my Poke friends. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, so they're, we're getting queued up for the after the, the final rose, much like they do in America, where there's a live audience that watches the finale together and then gets to witness the taping post-show. Witness show. the birth of a new beautiful yeah. couple rising from the ashes. Uh, and then we cut to uh, Jasmine and Mikkel and Kevin in Cuba. And this is the fastest finale I have Guys, ever seen. It was one hour and six minutes of total footage without Canadian commercials. Um, including the after it, the final includes rose. the after. So it was like by, by minute 40, they were donezo. By minute like 25, you know who won. Like they get, they bang through it, man. Yeah. Yeah. They So it's, it's not unusual for the last, you know, weekend or whatever it is. For her to spend a day with one of the guys, spend a day with the other guy. Um, but it's like a full day. Her t- her date with Mikkel was, no joke, four minutes maybe yeah. of, of total show footage. 
So first she has a date with Kevin, uh, and they go to a cave. While they're walking in the cave, Kevin says, I wonder if there's going to be bats. And then while they're talking in front of this cave, it's just constantly in the background, just like, squee, 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 squee. <laughs> It made it impossible. Like you always, you tend to run away when you're confronted with a comment. Of- squee, 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 squee. <laughs> there are a lot of birds on Mikel's date too. I don't know if you noticed that. No, I did notice that. It's just everywhere. These winged, these winged <laughs> bastards are ruining our 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 audio. So I guess their first date was in a cave, which I had forgotten about. But they reference this oh. is like a, a callback to their first date. I forget that. I forgot that. Uh, And so Jasmine kind of launches in right away and says, you know, I've kind of debriefed with my mom and my friend and they had the same question I do, which is, are you really ready for this? Um, Are you really ready to settle down? And Kevin tells us, the viewer, that he's kind of frustrated with this questioning because he's so certain. And every time she says stuff like that, he feels like she doesn't, you know, trust him. But she follows up and like, is a good point because you have... You don't have that much to go on. You don't have that much time with the other person on this show. And so out of the limited amount of time that her and Kevin have had together, uh, which like in the after show they showed for both boys, like a super cut of their best moments on the show. And you watch that and you're like, that's not just their best moments. That's it. That's the whole that's that represents the entirety of the time they got to spend with 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 Jasmine on the show during that limited amount of time twice. He was like, fuck this. I'm out. And it's like. Yeah, dog, you, you kind of got to have those questions coming at you, if that's what happens. Yeah, I think first he starts to get defensive, like he usually does, because he's like, she talks about how she's not sure he'll stick it out if things get tough, because he always gets up and walks out. And she's like, well, it's not like, or Kevin says, it's not like I'm planning to leave you. I just want to cool off. Uh, and she says, well, it's hard to watch you walk away. And then say things like, I don't need this, that feel like a a threat. Um, And it's here where Kevin kind of realizes, like, I need to stop being defensive. And so he says, you know, I wish I could go back uh, and and show you more how I feel about you. And and I should have stayed. And he apologizes, like, straight up. He's like, you're right. I was wrong those times. And I want to get better at that. Yeah. And he says, you know, that he's sorry. He says, you know, I love you. And then she says, you know that I'm falling in love with you. So we're just, we're doing this then, huh? Yeah, yeah, we're breaking out the L word. What? On both sides. What happened? In in 2015, this was unheard of. Last, I'm saying last year, all the way up to uh, the the Axeman. When the Axeman said, like, I love you. And actually said it back. It was heresy. It was crazy. That was the beginning of this year. In 2015, like, if anybody had done this, it would be like, whoa, that's weird. And I realize this is a different, you know, this is a different property. It's a different country. But it's like, it, this used to be a fucking hard and fast rule. You don't say it until you propose. And now it's like 100% of the time you say it to 100% of the people. I can't tell if, like, which side it's coming from. Is it coming from The Bachelor, Bachelorette? Or is it coming from the producers saying, hey, just so you know, we're cool with it if you want to say this? Here, I mean, my concern is I, I, I'm i guessing Ben's season did really well. This show is on the grow. And so when they find something that is like a good dramatic story point, it's like, let's chase it. This is a very crass way of looking at the show. I realize that. Um and but like you look at that and then you look at uh bachelor and then you look at bachelorette and you even look at bachelorette canada to a point now by the next to last episode you've got to be in love with two people you have to be in love with two people and you have to be torn about it and then you have to tell those people yeah so that when you you know turn one of them down ooh, it's so fucking tasty and it's I, like i don't think me- I don't think that can be true every time. I imagine this kind of conversation was happening in the fantasy suites when the cameras were gone. Fair. Um, But yeah, now it seems like they make it a point to put it on air. I don't, I don't, it could be real, whatever. We don't know. Jasmine, she keeps it 100, definitely. But like, this is the third season of this show, not counting Bachelor in Paradise, which is just a fucking free-for-all. Um... (laughs) 
where the same thing happens. I'm, I fall in love with two people. And I can't decide, but I'm going to tell both of them I love them, and then I'm going to break their. Which, like, you hear that and you say, like, well, that's just Bachelor. No, you just think that if you don't watch a show because it's happened in every season of the show that we've covered. That didn't used to be the case. There was a season where, and I don't want to spoil it because it's one of my favorite seasons, where the Bachelorette uh, has the final two, goes and breaks up with one of them early because she's like, it's the other one. Yeah. Doesn't say I love you to either of them until she breaks up with the other guy and is like, hey, it's it's not you. Go yeah. home. And the guy goes home. Like, I, I feel like that what they think is just like guaranteed drama. It ain't going to, if that happens in Nick's fucking season, I don't know. It's just these two women and I, I love them both equally and I'm going to tell them. And then, well, I don't know. The, the drama, like. That, what if it just escalates? What if all of a sudden, like, the final four? I love six women. <laughs> I love all 30 of these women, damn it. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, sure, that is, like, a traditional, like, drama structure, right? Though, who's he going to choose between these two? But that season where the Bachelorette sent the one guy home early, I'll never forget that. Because that was like, oh, damn. Like, yeah, that was like so that. real. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. God, that was a good season. Yeah. Um, so that's the end of the date. That's the end of the date. Boop, gone. They Squeeze never me. the bats fucking carry Kevin off to their lair. <laughs> they never sit down. They never go to a second location. No. They never change clothes. It's just we're talking in this cave. Now we're not. Next day, Kevin walks off into the cave, and Josh is like, "Where are you going?" He's like, "Oh, I live. I've always lived here." <laughs> Since the Paleolithic era, I, he is a caveman joke. Oh, he's got a very defined jawline. And a, and a brow line, too. And long hair. Well, used to. There mm. were some changes. There have been some tweaks to the Kevin technique. Good mm-hmm. looking boy. He looks so much like a hockey player, it's all I can think about. But a handsome hockey player, come on. Well, I mean, yeah. I know, I know. I For me, a hockey player isn't just, a slur. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm not saying that all, all hockey players are ugly. I'm just saying, like, you get beat on in the ring. The ring? That's what they call it, right? The hockey ring? No, oh, man. No. Uh, hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> there you right. go. There you uh, go. K- go Kings. Go Kings? San Francisco Kings? San Antonio Kings? Los Angeles. Los Angeles Kings. Go Blues! That's there you the, go. That's the St. Louis team. There you go. Uh, so now it's time Penalty! To- Penalty! High sticking. So... Don't come at me like you're not a sports head. <laughs> Don't come at me with that energy like Griffin. All you know is books. I would never come at you with that energy. <laughs> uh, then we move on to Mikel State, and it's over. Whoa. Yeah, Mikel State, like, they don't even go anywhere. They don't do anything. Mikel State, they stay at the resort and just go find a couch outside and sit on it. How's your date? <laughs> It's a pretty chill date. I will say Mikkel shows up in uh, very short shorts and mm. hands her a flower, which is sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. But yeah, then they just like walk the ground. Wait, which part is sweet? The shorts or the fucking flower? I mean, both. Those shorts were sweet as pie. Both in different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Got to see his other hog. <laughs> I don't know. Because he has a motorcycle. Yeah. Arr, rev me up. That much. What do they do on the couch? Uh, so, Mikkel kind of recognizes this as his last chance to kind of make his case. Um, and he tells us, the viewer, he says, you know, I, I feel kind of like I should be fighting for her, and I don't really know how to do that. Better not be physical fighting, bud, because it won't happen good. Are you saying Captain Canada could destroy Mikkel? Mikel's cut. Mikel's ripped. Mikel is fit. Yes, he would be destroyed. He would be a <laughs> Um, and so he just kind of tells her again that um that she care or that he cares about her a lot, and she tells us the viewer that she can so clearly see a future with him, and then she tells Mikel that she's falling in love with him, and she says it twice. Uh, and Mikkel feels like, well, that's what I've been looking for. This is the Here reassurance is, the I needed. The final piece of the puzzle. Yeah. All- like, I'm ready to propose. I know that she's into it. And then that date's over. <laughs> and that was it. 
it's, I got so, I got so, I don't know. Part of me just thinks like, you should, I, I, that rule of the bachelor or bachelorette not saying it until after the proposal. I just think that should be a rule. Well, I mean, you can't tell people what to they say. They used to. For like 15 straight seasons, they used to. Or is it like an unspoken rule? It, I don't know. I think the axe man fucking like was the one that like broke the contract. But they were like, ooh, that was good. Mmm. Daddy like, says Jeff Bachelor. The creator of Bachelor. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I, the fact it's just happened again. It's happened again. Oops, it's happened again. I love you. And you. Yeah. I love th- them. Yeah. <laughs> it's just wild, man. I don't really understand. Because here's the thing. Here's, I think, why it's so surprising. So if you're seeing two people, Mm -hmm. naturally, there's going to be one you like better. And I think in liking one of them better, you just assume that you are in love with that one and not the other because you're comparing them constantly. But what we're hearing now from these bachelor and bachelorettes is I, I do like one better, but that doesn't mean I don't love both of them. It's interesting from a like... We're all just created equal, you know? Everybody's got their own great stuff going on. Everybody's just equally in love. That's a beautiful utopia you've drawn up for yourself, but you know. You know which one you like. It's like, I don't need that. I don't need extra pressure to feel bad for the runner-up. The amount that I feel bad for the runner-up depends on their performance after they get dumped, and that's it. Well, Griffin, it's not about you. Yes, it is! (laughs) Lots of people are falling in love all over the world and getting married and, like, having kids and being married for, like, 80 years and dying in each other's arms notebook style. And I don't fucking see any of that. This one I see. This one they were like, here's a relationship for you, Griffin. Look at this. Ooh, we've got a special. Of course it's for me and you and us. I'm I'm just, I... I don't believe that Jasmine has created her feelings for the viewers. No, not the feelings, just the presentation of them. <laughs> I guess the one thing that could happen is that potentially the Bachelor Bachelorette could just not include that. Yeah. They could they could edit it out, and so we never know. But that would be wild. If it was like, if you told somebody you loved them, but that one didn't make the cut, like, of course it's going to make the cut. Yeah. I just think I don't know. It, I feel like it keeps you in suspense more. I don't know. It's like a. It's a. It's a. There's zero value to it from like an info standpoint of like trying to judge who she's gonna pick. Right. It's just designed to like make the loser feel worse. And I don't know. I think that stinks. Unless it's real and she couldn't contain it. And then- yeah, I was just say you keep saying like the way it was designed, but I, I don't think that has as much of a factor as as you think it does. It's it, well, okay. Then not looking at it like that, like even if it's not, even if it's all real, it's still a hurtful thing to be like. I know I'm gonna shoot one of these guys like out of the sky. And if that's the case, I'm like, I don't know. I don't think it's cool to tell yeah. them both that you love them. No, I, that's a fair point. If it's if it's not real, that's even. I think it's not. It's even worse in a way because like, yeah. it's that's a that's a rough thing to put on somebody's plate and then to throw their plate into the fucking ocean for a, a school of fish to eat. Well, the thing the thing they always make it seem like is that the whoever the lead is, they are deciding last minute, and so this declaration of love to both of them shows how undecided they are up until like the day of well that kind of sucks for the winner then doesn't it like it's not i'm i i don't want to i'm not expressing my dissatisfaction at the show or the people on it uh this the season of the show i'm saying i'm i'm expressing dissatisfaction because the conclusion of this season was the same as the conclusion of the last two seasons and it's hard for me to divorce that from how i watch any other show where if fucking like breaking bad ended and it's like we blew up another guy every fucking time like you know what i mean like if there's there's drama has to be like it's gotta get all mixed up sometimes Mm -hmm. in order for it to stay interesting 
And it's different people, and there's real ass feelings, real people really falling in love, starting families. That's cool. I get that. I totally get that. I'm not that cynical. But from like a a narrative perspective, like it was the same thing again. I know. I know. But I I I maybe I'm foolish, but I really believe that this actually happened this Me time. Me too. And I do, I I've been negative this whole time and I apologize because I think the couple that comes out of this is good. I turned to you at one point and I said, "That's a good love." I said that. <laughs> I did say that. Uh, do you want to get to ring shopping? I would love to go ring shopping. So, we were- I th- sorry baby. Rink shopping. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, so it's called a throwback. <laughs> um, so we were really curious about this a few episodes back. Who is the Neil Lane of Canada? Um, so on proposal day, we well, it's it's curious because in America, the ring guy is Neil Lane, and the kind of ring he shows you is a Neil Lane ring. But in this case, we see Brett. Holiday could have been ho- ho- could have been holiday. He had a, Brett an accent. Holiday. Fuck, that's a good name. I, let's just say it was Brett Holiday because that's a good Brett Holiday. But he had Michael Hall rings, mm. and I, I, you know, I don't know anything about rings, but I, I was confused that he didn't come with his own flavor. He had six, yes, to choose from. Yes, is the the number of rings is getting smaller, huh? Or maybe it's small. I mean, this is the first season of the Canadian show that we've watched. And I don't want to throw shade at their finances. Do you remember them? They used to come out with like a suitcase full. Fucking yeah, Neil Lane used to come out and he'd be like, "Here's my whole store." Yeah, it was like a it was like a big multi tiered briefcase. He would up I feel like. up in like a laundry hamper, and like a million <laughs> rings would come out of it. And now I feel like, but I feel like in recent seasons, it's like here's twelve. Did you? And this one's like, you've got this unique woman. You, she's the light of your life. And she's perfect for you. And you want to find that ring that matches her finger, that missing piece. Perfect for her uniqueness. <laughs> Here's six. <laughs> Here's six to choose from. Maybe maybe they found that the men were taking too long when they brought them a lot of choices. Maybe. Yeah, that's maybe, a possibility. Maybe it was like... And Neil Lane can only be exposed to the sunlight <laughs> <laughs> for 15 minutes before... Um, six though, babe. Yeah, six. Uh, so first it is um, first it is Mikkel looking at rings. This dude goes with a princess cut, single stone. That's fine. That's tasteful. It's got a single pink stone embedded at the base of the of the of the diamond. That's a that seemed kind of weird to me, and then it had that thing that I don't like, where the band is just all diamonds all over. It just looks all. I will say that it was a more um, understated you, ring than we see. They were all more understated than in the yeah. uh, in the Bachelor Bachelorette of the United States. No, there was very little like ice on these. Yeah, like nothing so big that Griffin turned to me and was like, "That's too big, right?" There was one that nobody looked at, <laughs> uh, but it looked like a. It was huge. Uh, so Mikhail picks out a ring, and then Kevin shows up, picks out a ring. But while he's picking out a ring, we're getting this inner cut of him talking to the camera Man. about how he feels going into this final day. This was wild. Yeah, he is really, really uncertain. Um, and he keeps talking about how if it doesn't work out that's fine he's been taking care of himself his whole life you know he can suck it up and bury it uh and then he like has a cry towel he has like a large white towel towel. the wildest thing he says is i told jasmine after our date because she was so stressed out i gave her an out he said uh i told her just send me home i'll be okay with it I will go home. I'll live my life. I'll bury it the way you know, and, and power through the way I've done, like with other stuff in my life. And then you just go with Mikkel because he's a really great guy. And yeah, you can't go wrong with a guy like Mick. So let me go home. Let me go home and, and then, take the burden off you. And you can just spend the rest of your time here just happy and you don't have to be as stressed out. And he's saying this while like hunched over and like wiping his face with this towel and like 
man, this dude is really like, and it, you've seen this a few times, like throughout the season, like he's so inside his own head. Um, yeah, but and, it's, there's it's and she apparently tells him like, I'm not ready to say goodbye to you. Um, and so he's like, yeah, so you know, I picked out a ring. I hope I get to show it to her. There's something about that anguish though that like feels so real like and i've talked about this a few times too because i I, i'm a big mikkel supporter but i also am a supporter of when i see stuff i'm like oh that's that could be something that could be a real something like when sean proposed to Catherine. that's my all-time dude that's my all-time top top proposal see i don't even remember it i remember it because Catherine was like Oh my god! Like she was like <laughs> genuinely like shaking uncontrollably and like yeah. losing losing the, her yeah, shit. I remember that now. Like it's it's those displays of real emotion. And I think we're so desensitized to it. And I was trying to pay more attention to it while watching this episode because it's so alien watching two people sit next to each other and being like, "You're just the most important person in my life to me." And, like you're doing a job interview. Mm-hmm. Um, and there there wasn't too much stuff like that, but it can still get like that sometimes. And when you see these displays of people like actually having a fucking conniption because they're like realizing like oh man i'm i've got a lot of skin in the game and uh could just go home with nothing oh no when i see like an actual real reaction to that which it felt like that's what we were getting out of kevin like i see that and it's hard not for me to not like be like oh i'm on this person's side now because yeah it did seem really sincere like for all of our concerns about kevin actually having real emotions like that was apparent. I don't, I haven't thought that Kevin has not real emotions. I just I I felt like Kevin was so removed from his own emotions that like you couldn't even tell if he knew how he was feeling cuz he seemed so disconnected from that part of himself. I guess so. I mean, I think he was more disconnected from, like, the process. Like, when he would get so pissed off because he would think of her dating other dudes. Like, this whole season, he's been kind of a jealous, kind of a grumpy dude who just, like, kind of bolts sometimes when he gets too upset. Like, I don't know. I feel like he's been one of the more emotional people Yeah, Yeah, I guess. I guess. Maybe vulnerable is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, sure. Um... But but anyway, so they both pick out rings, and then it's time to get ready for the for the big proposal moment. And so we see Jasmine getting ready, and we see Mikkel getting ready. We get a nice close up of that nipple ring as he's Y'all, putting it's on the, his shirt. It, it, I, this was, I think, the camera operator being like, "And finally, let's put this mystery to bed," and just like zooms right in on it. This the camera operator literally leans forward. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Getting fucking 4D IMAX <laughs> Doctor Strange. Uh, and then we see Kevin getting ready, and then it's time to go out to the beach where the proposal will occur, and they've created like a little crate maze out to where Jasmine is. <laughs> I said it looked like a survivor immunity challenge, like where you had to go and break open the crates with this hatchet and collect the puzzle pieces to find the combination. I guess, I guess Bachelorette Canada doesn't have access to palapas the way that... <laughs> That we do. Well, I mean, they were in Cuba. There should there should be palapas ahoy. So so instead, they just made this path of crates to a place where was Jasmine looking, was. I was looking in the crates. Like maybe each crate has like a thing from one of the dates. I couldn't. No. Didn't think. Just like little little knickknacks stacked on crates. Uh and then and so then we're waiting to see who's going to come out first. And what Bachelorette Canada does, which is interesting, is they show both the guys walking at the same time. So you see both of them like walking through the beach, and yeah. you, and that way, it's not like the limo pulls up, somebody gets out, whoever gets out first you is see, the like, person a, going home. A centimeter of pant leg over a shoe, and you're like, oh, it's him. That's his shoe. No, this was more like both guys are walking. Which one is happening? Kind of a continuity error, I guess, but like I like it a lot more because it, it did build some tension until the reveal, the loser, the runner up, the jilted uh, second place winner. First, first loser. First loser. We see Jasmine waiting on the beach, and we can tell somebody has arrived, and we cut back and the person that has arrived first is Mikel. That's fucking great. 
That's just fine. We had a lot of hurt hearts in the Facebook group. A lot of people spoiling it for us, and that's okay, gang. <laughs> like, this is on us. It was the finale, and there was no way for us to watch it the first people time. People kept trying to post these posts that were so obvious. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but fuck this show, no! <laughs> like, no spoilers, but I'm devastated. <laughs> and I was like, well, then I know who it is. <laughs> and if you were one of those people, don't be too upset. There were, like, six of you. We knew it was going to happen. Emotions were high. Uh, Rachel also got it spoiled by The Bachelorette. Uh, Twitter. Yeah, account. well, no, I follow them on Facebook, and it was like, look at the happy couple, and I was like, well, this is Which my own did, fault. And I'll say something, I'll be honest, it kind of put a damper on my watch of the whole episode, because yeah. no, the, the, the whole episode's about building tension, and we didn't get any Well, it tension. let us open our hearts to Kevin a little bit. I feel I, like... I've had my heart open to Kevin. I've been coming around to Kevin's side, and watching it, like, the thing I keep coming back to is she's always liked him more. Yeah. Or, like, p- period. Here's, here's, a, so here's the comfort that I brought myself. Um, so Mikel, as you know, we love, and we love Mikel for who he is as a person, as I think Jasmine does. Sure. But as a couple, they just never, they were cute together at times. They were really cute together at times. Because they're both so great. Because they're both really great. Yeah. I I feel like the same thing kind of happened with Mike that happened here where like the last few episodes and maybe it's just because like I see I don't I don't agree with you on this. I started to think like oh this dude's not gonna win and so maybe it was me just like trying to justify it but like I feel like they just kind of stalled out a little bit and that it it wasn't like they weren't communicating and they weren't growing their relationship it was like the stuff they were doing to do that was very much like the job interview thing I was telling you about earlier where it's just like. You're just really special to me, and I think you're so great, and it's just like, I'm so happy to have met you, and... uh, But see, Jasmine was saying... That it was getting better, yeah. Yeah, that we were escalating, that she hit it off with Kevin right away, and that Mikkel had just, like, run up from behind. But she always presented it like, Mikkel's catching up to Kevin, and like, okay. I know, that's true. I just think, like, what happened between the two of them, and it became very clear in the After the Final Rose, too is they both have such respect for each other and, like, a recognition that they are good people. Yes. And it's just... I mean, even Mikkel was like, it's just going to take time. Yeah. You know? Like, and we'll be fine. I will also say this now opens up the possibility, and W Network, I don't know if this is how you roll, but Bachelor starring Mikkel, are you fucking kidding me? Yes, 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 yes. I know. Please do this. Please... I can't imagine getting if this is if if Bachelor Canada is happening during Bachelor or Bachelorette America. I cannot imagine watching two of these programs at the same time. The only way I would do it is if it's Mikkel. If it's Mikkel, uh, I, we, I will make the time to watch it because I, I <laughs> have to see this. I have to see this TV program, please. Yeah. yeah so Mikkel, Mikkel gives us a, his little proposal speech. Um, well. He d- well, let me let me talk about it. Yeah. So um, he talks about how he wants them to be a team, and how he's always got her back no matter what. And then he kind of pauses, and you know she's kind of upset, and I think he's trying to figure out is this like an upset? <laughs> is this good weeping? Yeah. <laughs> and there's no even like there's no. Um, He's not reaching for the holster. No. No, there's no stutter like I'm going to shift positions of my body. There's no there's no knee. There's no There's int- no even There's it, like no Cuz sometimes they'll yeah. do that, right? Though sometimes they'll be like start to reach for the pocket and shift your body weight and the the other person's like, "No, stop." There's no slow lowering. Like he you can tell he is not going anywhere. And she starts talking. And I thought this is interesting because usually what happens on the bachelorette in the in the states is that there will be a, a a slow lowering of a person you're right and then either they will cut them off before they even get down or they will allow them to get down on one knee and then pull them back For up both men it was they came and gave their spiel yeah. and then she would respond and it yeah. w- instead of they come and give their spiel and then propose and then her response is either yes or no to the proposal which is good. Like, uh, I, I talked about how this this thing about saying I love you to both people is just harder on the, the runner up. This was a this was a blessing because yeah. it still sucks. Right. To get shot down on TV. What sucks more is fucking proposing. 
proposing Mm -hmm. and getting told no. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. So she, she says that she's, she's felt so lucky to get to know him and that he's made her feel so cared about. Uh, and she says that I've, I've meant everything I've said to you, um, but I've developed a stronger relationship with someone else, and it feels wrong to that say... Was, that was fine. Who? <laughs> Mark. The, in, the producer, <laughs> Mark. Mark, the producer? I love Mark, the producer. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> We're engaged now. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Mark will book your flight home for you. Um... Everybody got such a bad edit this year. I wonder why. Mark knows why. Mark's <laughs> pulling the fucking strings. Our date got canceled again? Yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> this fantasy suite is just an empty room and a cardboard box. What all, kind of fantasy suite is this? All the condom wrappers are empty. This one has a little sign in it that says no. <laughs> That's weird. Mark. <laughs> For some reason, the sprinkler system came on, and now I can't get aroused. I can't get aroused. (laughs) Weird, Mark. Mark, do you know anything about this? (laughs) No, man. Go go get her. I'm in support of your love. Oh, here comes our food. Damn it, they dropped our food. Again, what is... (laughs) Every day, they drop all the food. Mark, you gotta get better. I know. (laughs) (laughs) This band is a middle school band. It's a middle school band. And they only have trumpets. Inflatable trumpets. Mark, (laughs) did you book this band? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) This proposal beach is covered in alligators. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Wonderful. Weave between the alligators and the boxes. <laughs> Mikkel gets shot down. No, pro- no, no he proposal. Does. And she and she says it feels wrong to say goodbye to you. You deserve the best, and you're going to find that person. And I'm going to feel a little sad when you do. Um, and he says you're always going to hold a piece of my heart. And they hug. And that's it. That's the only he thing he says. Away. Yeah. That was the, that was a weird thing t- for me. Like. Well, you always have a piece of my heart. Deuce it. Like, he's just gone. Yeah. And he goes to the car, um, which is not a limo. It's like another classic Cuba car. Which I thought was weird because it's not a huge car and there's no, like, partition between the driver. So, like, this dude's having kind of a cry, like, one and a half feet away <laughs> from the driver of the car. Yeah. Uh, so, he says that he's not disappointed, um, that he's just sad. Uh, and then he has that moment that's always so heartbreaking to watch where he's like, he's basically like, I'm the best man I know how to be. Uh, I don't know how to be a better person than this. It's like, I could understand maybe if she would have rejected the guy that I started out as, but I'm so proud of the guy that I'm coming out of this as. I Um, am too, Mikkel. You've grown so much. Yeah. It's always so sad to see people take it so personally. Like, like there's something wrong with me that that you know i need to fix and i don't know what it is well remember when mikhail went through the rose ceremony i think he was final three or final two and he was like i'm not gonna win this and he like he got really really bummed out about it he's like this always happens to me but like i'm never good enough to like get what i want yeah and you watch that you're like this guy's being over dramatic he's got it in the bag he didn't have it in the bag and man that's not gonna help that any is it yeah, I think when he comes back for the after the final rose, it seems like he, I don't know, that he's not taking it as personally. Because he doesn't ask her all the questions that we usually get on that show, yeah. you know, where it's like, is there something I could have done? And in fact, Noah even asked him if he would do anything differently. And he says no. I just, he's such a, he's a nice boy. He's a, he's was, a very so nice boy. I'm so sad for him. Especially when we watch the... I started to justify it, right? Because I, I, I did genuinely become uh, a supporter of of Kevin. I think I think they are cute together, and they the this, the relationship seems very real and believable and good and cute. Um, and so, like, I did that, and I I wasn't feeling so awful about Mikkel not winning until we watched his best of clips uh in the in the after the final rose and it's like how did this dude not win 
There's so much good stuff. That necklace he made for her out of yeah. the coral. The motorcycle. Yeah. The nipple. <laughs> nipple. Um, so now it's Kevin's turn. And Kevin walks out. And he kind of does more than Mikel. He does kind of like a retelling of their progress. Uh, talks a lot about the different dates they've had. And specifically about how he realized he felt strongly for her when she was talking about her um, her father and, and was so sad. And he was like, you know, I wanted to grab you and take your sadness away. And I've never felt that way before. Um, and I just, every day I wake up and think, how can I make that girl smile? Um, and he's like, you know, after the first date, I was hooked. Um, and, and and since we've been together, I've felt love from you in a way that I've never felt before. Uh, it's really articulate for Kevin. Yeah. Then he stops still standing up, no knee, no lowering of the body. Yeah. I think that might just be the, the norm here. And Jasmine says that that he's incredible and that they've always had this crazy electricity and that she likes the tough exterior he has because uh, it makes her feel safe. And she says, I care about you so much and I love you. And I think it's when she just says, I love you just flat out that he realizes because he gets this look of relief and then they do a lot of kissing. Uh, and then he does propose. Um, and she says, yes. And then there's a whole montage of their relationship. It's very nice. That we get to watch. It's so, it, it was, they had a really cute moment right at the end. Or like right after they proposed and they're like just walking down this beach. And she's like, hey, say something nice about me right now. <laughs> and he's like, you're the girl of my dreams. And she's like, yeah. Like, it was so cute. Like, I genuinely, I genuinely came around to, to this. And I feel like, um. Yeah, like, I don't, I'm not in love with Kevin. You know, I don't feel well, like... that's fucking good. Oh, well, I'm just saying, I don't feel like I was really invested in Kevin finding love. But, I, you know, I'm happy that Jasmine's happy. Yeah. You know? And I think she is. I think they've found it. I hope so. Together. I hope so, too. Are we going to get an update? Because usually we rely on the Bloyds. I know, right? How are we going to hear anything? Speaking of, what the fuck's up with Ben and Lauren? Yeah, I don't know. I can't. That could tell. just be the show. That could just be their their freeform show, where there's maybe just a little bit of drama in Jack. But people probably said this about Nick and Jessica too, and that shit broke bad. Really? Are you are you talking about Jessica Simpson? Yeah. <laughs> they had the show, and on the show oh, it'd be like okay. they're fighting. I couldn't figure out how we were making that leap. On the show it'd be like they're fighting, and be like that's just the show. No dog, they fucking broke up. There's been some rumors online that, that, that the wedding is off, hmm. um, but I haven't seen it substantiated anywhere. Mm. Uh, so then it's I've been time. So much ter- we've been watching a lot of Terrace House lately, and that show has a panel of, I think, six people on it uh, that just like comment on the, the, the drama, the tasty drama that happens on that show. It makes me think, like, what if we had four other hosts on Rose Buddies that would just be like, mm, did you see the way that he looked at her? Delicious. <laughs> you know? Well, then we'd have to break in real time, though. We could have, like, oh, what? There's probably that technology. We could do that. We could get, like, the a really loud, kind of pervy guy. We could get a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> a 14-year-old 14 boy 14-year-old boy who wears soft wool sweaters. Yeah? You, you end it? You're no. digging this idea. No, not at all. Okay. So after the final rose with Noah, and they bring Mikel out, and we get a journey recap of Mikel and Jasmine together. And yeah, this is where he says, like I mentioned that he wouldn't do anything different. Uh, and that it's, you know, hard to watch back cause he's still in love with her. And then Jasmine comes out and Jasmine's really upset. She's like real teary really upset. There's a really fun moment. Well, fun. Uh, where she's like tearing up and, uh, Mikel like instinctively reaches to his breast pocket and pulls out a handkerchief. And as soon as he does it, half the audience is just like, "Oh!" <laughs> but uh, it's like too nice. It's really she nice. Doesn't and she doesn't want to use it. He's like, "Somebody just gave it to me. Like, please take it." And then uh, Noah reaches into his pocket and gets a handkerchief. He's like, "Here, she'll take my bad, my cheap one, or something yeah. like that." Yeah. Um. 
And um, Mikkel launches into this really nice speech about how, you know, watching the show back and watching her with everyone else, you know, made me love you more. You put yourself out there so much. And I and I am really am happy for you. And I mean that. And Jasmine just talks about how hard it's been and how much she cares about him. And so there was a thing she said where she said, I, it's hard being deeply in love with someone like Kevin, but also still to this day have feelings for another person. And the wild thing she said was, if you, if you really are in love with two people, then that's, I think that's just how it sh- how it's got to be, which I don't I didn't take as like throwing shade at uh, at Ben or Jojo, but I think there is something to be said for uh, fessing up to the fact that like yeah like I still really uh, have feelings for this other person even though I'm engaged to another person, which is not something you really get out of people in the after the final rose. Usually they couch it a little bit more like, you know, I just hope they find someone that makes them happy. No, yeah. like, I still have feelings for them and I'm engaged with somebody else. And that's kind of whack. Like on one hand, they're saying it's been a long time, you know, like it's been months and months that we've had to stay in silence. Um, but on the other hand, she's saying like, but I still even even to this day still have feelings for this guy who's yeah. not my fiance, which is such a far cry from, you know, I will I'll always I'll always cherish the memories that no, I'll you know I'll always think so highly no, like I have got feelings for this dude and it's not the guy I'm gonna marry. Yeah, Noah actually asked her this question that should have been like a softball. He's like, "Have you had what if moments?" And she says, "Yeah, well, Kevin and I, you know, had conflicts on the show and we've continued to have conflicts since then." And this cuts to there's a, a one woman in the audience that had like <laughs> this black choker on and these these big glasses. They cut back to her like every time they need <laughs> no. a reaction shot from anybody. <laughs> Cuz she would have such a like physical reaction to everything that was said. <gasps> 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 So it gets to the point where she's like, she seems so distressed that Mikkel starts comforting her and saying like, well, the goal is to be happy, you know, and, and, you know, I think we need to step back and take a deep breath and, and, you know, if, and if you're, if you're happy, you know, then that was, that was the point and, and, you know, and we just needed to take some time, um, and and recognize that that eventually we'll be happy. It was really yeah, weird. Yeah, it was. It was uh, if you're not happy, then all of this was for nothing. It was like, okay, whoa, yeah, shit. I mean, yeah. you got to travel the world and hang hang out with some some folks and go on cool cool trips. Like, that was something. So then Mikkel leaves. No tease about like whether or not he's the next bachelor. I don't know what the I don't know what the schedule is, or if he's quote ready to find love. Yeah, none of those like little little teasers. Because we didn't find out that Nick was going to be the next bachelor until the end of Bachelor in Paradise. That's so true. there was a there's like a we looked it up. Bachelor in Paradise ran from like August sixth to September seventh. They got in and fucking well, out. Well, remember, with that. I know it was they were doing two, two episodes, episodes a week. week. Yeah, but we were trying to. Figure, first of all, I can't believe we've been watching this show since September. That seems crazy to me. And also that just Bip was just like, hey, what's up? We're Bip, we're trash, and bye. <laughs> uh, so now we're back to just Jasmine on the couch. And she's talking about how uh, her relationship with Kevin has grown. And it's been hard. And it's been a longer time than she thinks people realizes. Uh, and then they allow... Jasmine to take questions? Yeah, they did like four questions for a quick Q&A segment. And guys, these were some fucking lightweight. If you're going to get in the business of bachelor journalism, you got to know how to ask the hard questions. I think one of the questions might have come from a Rose buddy. I think so too, actually. Because I recognize the one, somebody asked a question of um, who... Who has the best hair? Yeah, who has your most favorite and least favorite hair? Um, in, but that's actually that was the best question in the bunch because the answer was hysterical. Yeah, so she actually said that she liked Scott's hair. Don't know who that is. You're making that person. Up. I don't remember. Or was it Seth? Was Scott. It Seth or Scott. She said Scott. But she said she actually has always disliked Kevin's hair. 
Uh, and she was the one that that Made talked him, him into that haircut. I I'm but her because they had us. They asked us to send in a question, and so we did, and it didn't get asked. But I'm looking back, and that question was like, "What parts of the show were fake bullshit?" <laughs> like looking back, it is the most like moody teenager. Qu- what parts of the show were you just fucking faking it? <laughs> fucking liars no. so it was drew davidson who started the rose reckoner.com which mm-hmm. is our fantasy uh bachelor bachelor oh i thought we came up with the questions now no. i feel bad for casting shit on drew but it was it was a question that like thinking no, about the like, question it gets deep dog the question was like was there anything that aired that you felt like you know wasn't really representative yeah was there somebody who got like a bad edit or somebody that got like a good edit because that's a thing right but like you know they ain't gonna talk about that on the show well, it was it was Jasmine that was supposed to answer it. I know they're not going to ask that of any. They're not going to. Maybe you did ask it and it just didn't show up in the edit. But like, I don't. What parts of the show were different from the way that the people who make the show want us to see it? Yeah, I guess that's weird. I just think that's. that's I a, think there was there's a way to ask that question without making anybody admit. Well, something. I mean, it's a thing that they kind of stand up against, right? Like. You say you got a bad edit, but yeah. you said everything you said. So, like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that's a thing that they don't ever want to acknowledge because it breaks the spell a little yeah. bit. Uh, and so then Kevin comes out. Looking good. Good haircut. Like, really good. <laughs> the hair looks so much better. Yeah, like, it looks so much d- better. He does, like, he's got, the thing was with that, that long hair and that jawline, I think it's easy to make caveman goofs. But when you cut the hair, now he just has slick hair and a nice jawline. It's like, oh, fuck. He's a handsome guy. He's a handsome boy. Uh, so he talks about how he's just excited to go grocery shopping or take her out to dinner or on a date. A lot of Oz on that. Uh, and then they talk to the moms. The moms are both there. I completely forgot about the fact that these moms, neither of them really approved of this yeah. union. Yeah. So they don't really talk to Jasmine's mom. They just kind of gesture to Jasmine's mom. But they do talk to Kevin's mom, Jill, because as we remember, Jill had a very hard time with Jasmine. Uh, and she says, yeah, I just I had a really huge challenge with the with the whole show. And I was so guarded, but I've really grown to love Jasmine. Um, and then they ask Jill and her husband they have any advice for the new couple and it's so uncomfortable it's not great they kind of listen. stumble yeah around. just listen she talks a lot so i listen and i guess the important thing is to listen and like, be can you please truthful not, can you not fight now <laughs> please the times for fighting is over We're, we all need to like decompress and then and then there's this moment so the show is wrapping up and I guess because they have no intention of revealing kind of what's going to happen next in the franchise, Noah says, well, there's been a lot of toasts on this show, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a last toast. And so everybody gets a little glass of well, champagne. Well, maybe that's something they do on Canadian Bachelor, which they have done a couple times now. Um, I liked it. It was a nice, it was a nice way to it it yeah. establish a nice mood on he the way He was like, out. oh, we just wish you the best and a toast to Kevin and I feel Jasmine. like Noah did a good job. In this, in this after, in this after setting, he was a good host. Let's go. Th- let's wrap up our experience of Bachelor at Canada. Things we liked. I feel like Noah. They didn't give him a lot of stuff to do, but when he did have stuff to do, he's a good host. That's a that's a fucking tough act to follow, man. Jasmine, favorite Bachelorette for me. Yeah, edging out, just barely edging out Emily who was my favorite before this. Yeah, I think Jasmine is more perceptive. Like, she's more well-spoken than Emily. Emily was great because she was passionate and knew exactly what she wanted. But Jasmine was better at kind of summarizing and reading the guys. And what's impressive about her is she stayed that way. I feel like um, uh, when Caitlyn uh, was Bachelor, I was such a huge Caitlyn fan when she was on Bachelor because she was really funny uh and like had a lot of the same sort of virtues that that uh jasmine had but then when she was bachelorette like she wasn't it was it was kind of a boring season like i don't think she was as colorful as she was when she was a contestant on the show because i feel like a, a lot of people sort of collapse under the weight of what is expected of you like you're expected to be this like royal figure in a way um and Jasmine just was so real the whole time, I feel like. She didn't, like, there was no curve of, as the show continued to go on, she got, like, more and more, 
like serious and more like a another host of the show and not like a person who's like invested in it. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Uh the boys, good fucking batch of boys. Couple stinkers in there, but like nothing nearly as bad yeah. as we've seen. No, mostly really good boys. Yeah. Um some travel, not really as much as I think I would have liked. Yeah. Uh the dates were pretty good. Dates were pretty good. Um I that's just the tone of it. Like it was a little bit classier. You know what I mean? Like it was just a I and that's a tough thing to like label. Yeah, not a lot of people getting like sloppy drunk. Um no like big physical fights. Uh no exes. No, no like, exes, like rumors up. about yeah. ex girlfriends. The classic I wish there was a better I can't think of a better adjective for it. But there's something to be said for it, and this is gonna sound like the most like up up my butt. <laughs> thing ever but like c- to continue the uh comparisons to the only show i care about right now which is terrace house like it's weird watching a show that is based on essentially based on an american reality show uh but it follows sort of the norms of a different uh country uh and how depressing that is because man the things i don't like about the bachelor are just like how just like fucking stupid and rowdy it gets sometimes and sometimes that's good sometimes that can be fun but like uh, yeah the thing the thing that i think we've started to notice on american bachelor bachelorette is there are people that are picked not because there is any hope of compatibility yes yes. they are picked because they are going to bring explosions like they may as well like in their first behind the scenes interview just be like hey i'm uh, Cameron, and I'm going to be a real fucking shit show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, hi, my name's Wesley. I have no interest in finding love. I'm here because I have an album coming out on August 3rd. My name's Gerald. I came here to get <laughs> fucked up and whip my dick all around. Uh, people, They're going to keep me around for the first episode, uh, and I'm going to get a rose at the end of that first episode, which is going to be crazy. And then they're going to get uh, a lot of screen time out of me in the second episode, but then I'll be going home. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to be a real <laughs> shitty distraction for a while. Yeah. I'm Priebus, and uh, <laughs> not no relation. And uh, I'm just going to get out there, and I'm going to be uh, pretty racist, and I'm going to uh, cuss everybody out, and you're gonna, not going to get to know anybody else, because the whole show is going to be about old Priebus for a bit. And uh, you're going to get pretty frustrated with old Priebus by... By the time I go home in in episode six, which is crazy, right? My name is Grandpa. Um, (laughs) I have a tragedy that I think will bring a lot of interest to the show. Um, And I'm going to talk about that tragedy pretty much every episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I'll go home. My name is Trashbag, and (laughs) I really only just came here to try to fight Grandpa at some point. (laughs) And they're going to build that for a while. And you're going to be like, I don't care about this. This came out of nowhere and it's full. It's complete bullshit. I want to know more about Sweet Mike. And it's like, (laughs) I know, dude. I love Sweet Mike, too. We all do. And I'd love to get to know more about him. But I am going to fight Grandpa at some point. And we are going to need to focus on this for a long long time. A good eight episodes. So uh, thanks for... for that was a good. That's good. That was that was that good Rose Buddies analysis. But it's true, and there was less of all of that. Yeah. There was I, except for the fighting thing. That was. I feel like that's gotta be in there now, but like there's less of all of that in in Bachelorette Canada, which was refreshing. Like I gave the ending shit because it, you know, the ending, if you want to call it that, like it's kind of similar to how it's ended, and it makes me makes me worried that it's gonna do that every time now. Um, but the rest of that shit, it, this show is so light on, and you don't need contrived drama. You don't need a bunch of bullshit. This is a show about people trying to fall in love with each other. This is a show yeah. about somebody dating 100,000 people at the same time. That's crazy. Focus on that. That's crazy. That's that's what I, I felt good about us, because I feel like we say a lot, we don't need that drama. But I was always a little worried that we did. You know, that we thought we didn't need it, but we actually did. And it turns out, after watching Bachelor at Canada, we actually don't. Because this show, as short as it was, and there's a few episodes shorter than an American Bachelor or Bachelorette, there were more just fucking nice moments. 
and we made fun of a lot of them, but like Thomas's date with her in the cabin, like singing a little song that he wrote for her, it made my spine want to die. But like she was so, <laughs> she liked it so much, and it was so sweet. And like there were so many sweet moments in this show. And yeah. it's because it didn't focus on, like, oh, fuck, our villain got sent home. We need a new villain right now. There was one villain. He wasn't very good at it. He was gone. That was it. Done. Yeah. That's how, like, this, this show, in a lot of ways, like, got back to basics. As silly as that sounds. But, like, the basics are fucking good. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yeah. worried, I'm worried that the American version, because it's growing and the audience is growing so much, they're not going to go back to basics because they're going to look at what's been going on in the most recent Speaking season. Speaking of the American version, yeah. did you see that Nick mm-hmm. is going to have 30 yes, women? 30 fucking women, which is always the number that I bring up to be like hyperbolic and bring up how there's a lot of people in the 30. 30. That's got to be, the, that's like. It has to be the record. I feel like with Chris Souls, maybe it was like he got a lot in there, twenty five or something. Thirty so much that 30. first that first episode is just going to be the women. Like everybody's here, right? No, okay. Now everybody's what? <laughs> uh, Sarah L, Sarah M, Sarah P, and Sarah Q. You're all needed on set. <laughs> let's let's put let's put a bet down right now. And let's get a let's get a Facebook thread started in the Rose Buddies group of what you think the duplicated name will be this. Ooh, season. I like that. For me, I'm gonna say. Well, think. Wait, let's think about the time period. So it'll be these women will probably. I mean, there's some speculation that they'll be older because Nick is older, but I bet a lot of them no will be no in their mid twenties. So think about women that are a few years younger than you. Hmm. What was a popular name? I mean. I feel like hmm. the people that just finished college. What are their names? I feel like I'm trying to think of like women that are younger than me that I knew multiple names of. A lot of Katies. Yeah. A lot of. Um, I mean, a lot of Sarahs. Like so that name never really goes out of style. Yeah, but we've had that. Well, it's not popular anymore. I feel like the babies it's of true. today are it's not true. named Sarah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'll say Katie. I feel like there hasn't been like a season with like a bunch of a bunch of Katies on it. Yeah. Um, you got a you got a prediction? No, I Megan? mean Megan. Were there Megans then? I yeah, thought Megan dude. was more an eighties name. No, no. I mean, people in their mid twenties are still born in the eighties. Well, I guess late eighties. Holy shit, you're right. No, God. Nineties. Yeah. Okay. Um oh then a lot of like Bart. <laughs> you know i know i was trying to think of when friends came on and whether or not there'd be a bunch of like phoebe's and rachel's a lot of uh devon sawa just like squish it together into one really fast name devon sawa hi i'm devon sawa k i'm <laughs> devon sawa w <laughs> it's gonna be buck wild so let me fold my legs because i'm dying I have to sit in, like, a corner of my... Rachel can attest to this, if you can help me describe how I sit. Because right now our dual office setup, our dual recording setup, is you're on the other side of the room. You're sitting in my very comfy, expensive office chair, and you're loving it. Mm -hmm. And you got a stand mic. I've got a desk mic that I have to kind of hunch over to get up on because I'm sitting on one of our dining room chairs. And also, I'm kind of folded up between the edge of the desk and this uh, shelf full of games that I fucking knocked over at the beginning of this The episode. only reason we have to do that is because otherwise, one of our mics will pick up the other one. It's so rough. It's also the smallest room in our house. We have one month, I think. The next episode, well, here's the thing. We kind of had to release these episodes on Thursdays, except this one, which I'm going to edit right now and get up on Wednesday. Uh, because that's what the Canadian Bachelorette demanded. I don't know what schedule we're going to be on now. Maybe we should get back on the regular schedule of Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Um, but we have a month. And a month. for some of that, we're going to have a baby and probably maybe we'll miss an episode. Or yeah, we'll or probably there. miss a week. But I think we are going to speak more generally. Um, basically, we're going to talk about things that don't require me to take notes. I think at this point, I think we could do a Terrace House episode without having to take notes, without having to take notes, without having to do any of that. And we just like talk about the show, maybe a short one. Like there'll probably be some pretty short episodes here and there Mm -hmm. as well. We're kind of jazzing it and we're going to keep things coming because that's important. And you guys are very important to us. Um, But it may get a little bit touch and go. But I do. I want to talk about Terrace House because like, no joke, it's it's it is a it is a solace to me. It is a source of 
Infinite We're saying T E R R A C E. Terrace House, Boys and Girls in the City. We mentioned it. It's on Netflix. We mentioned it last week. It's on Netflix. Give it a shot. It's it's so it's so wonderful. It is such a wonderful, wonderful show. Um, I want to thank people for gifts. Yeah. Uh, so recently, friend of the show Erica Huff sent us uh, some candles that she had made that were um, some votives. B- b- bim bam themed. Mm-hmm. We should uh, light those up in the bath and just like let them float. S- <laughs> you know, I don't think they're floating candles. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see, won't we? Um, Erica has an Etsy store called Wick Habit. It's, these candles are so good; they smell incredible. Uh, and then we got another gift uh, from somebody named Maria, and it, she works at a baby store. And it was a series of baby products, um, one of which was the Nose Frida, so, uh, which Griffin has tweeted about. Yeah, I, I went on this tweet chain about the Nose Frida, which is a fucking silly straw you plug into your baby's snoot and then suck the snot out of them. Sorry, everybody. You need to confront <laughs> this reality with me. We have heard from multiple parents that the little old-fashioned bulb is not effective. Work. Yeah. And, and so, that the best the best tool is the straw in the nose. And so I tweeted that and Maria was like, eh, check your P.O. box. <laughs> she also gave us uh, some really cute like little hand and feet puppet things that you yeah. put on the baby. They're really cute. And uh, this little crinkly piece of baby paper. Um, thank you very much, Maria. Thank, thank you. you to everybody who sent us stuff. Again, like our nursery is full of like mm-hmm. these great, sweet gifts that people have. I have literally not us. had to purchase a onesie. I know we have received so many. Uh, thank you all very much. Again, we're about to enter a sort of weird period for the show. Maybe we we will keep things going. We promise we will keep you updated of what the schedule is like. So watch that Facebook group and Twitter. Um, and thank you all very much. Thank you to the cast of The Bachelorette Canada yeah. who's followed us. Like it, that has been a new experience for us. Uh, and uh, if we were hard on your on the show, and I hope I hope you took it in good spirits uh, because I still loved it. It was still one of my favorite seasons of this show I've ever watched because it was like it was nice. I'm into nice programming now. <laughs> Like yeah. it's it's important. Like things are kind of rough, right? And I I find myself now, and I think all year I have gravitated towards like games and movies and music and TV that has been like nice and positive. Yeah, we want to be reminded of what like makes makes things good. Yeah, and this this show, even though it's in like a franchise that like we sometimes love to hate. Uh, this this was such a good season of that. And so if you were one of our listeners who was involved, and I realize I'm speaking to like 11 people right now, like you guys made a good, you guys made a really good thing. So, well, well done. I'm going to miss this show, babe. And I'm going to miss our Canadian friends. I hope they stick around. We, yeah, we try too. and watch things that are publicly accessible, but I, I have a feeling once the American Bachelor Bachelorette starts up, it might we, be so, We got some tweets from people who are like, I'm ride or die. I'm with it. So. Yeah. Hopefully they'll... Hopefully. They'll stick with us. Uh, thank you all again. We will talk to you next week uh, with something. Terrace House. Just go ahead and start watching Terrace House. <laughs> uh, and uh, until then, I'm Griffin McElroy. I'm Rachel McElroy. When you're ready. Rose, stay with us on this journey of joy. Spoiler alert. She ends up with Soldier Boy. Right,